thank you very much, Laurentio. Uh, thank you uh, for this kind of work as well. Because we can only properly address migration with the participation of social partners. Because the best step towards integration is work. And no one knows the world of work better than you do. You bring the voices of experience, of what works or what doesn't work. You can share the voices of those directly living these experiences. Our cooperation on migration is a fruitful one. The European Migration Forum is one of the most important tools of this cooperation. And this is the sixth forum and certainly not the last. This year's forum focuses on recovery. Recovery of our society and of our economy. Following the pandemic that impacted so negatively all aspects of our life, especially the young ones, I must say. This recovery can only happen if you, NGOs, social partners, local authorities are involved. And recovery can only happen if migrants and migrant organizations are involved. Without migrants, we wouldn't have been able to cope with the pandemic, as Rice is said by, by, by Krista already. Many essential workers, frontline workers, are migrants or of migrant background. Doctors and nurses, of course, but also workers on farms and supermarkets, delivering goods to our homes or cleaning our hospitals, our offices. Migrants are essential to our economy and society, it should not be a surprise. But for many, the pandemic opened the eyes. Migrants are not them. Migrants are part of us. We must hold on to this recognition. Now we are looking at the future. To rebuild what was broken by the pandemic. And we must reinforce and underline a more positive narrative on migration. Migration should, we should not fear migration. We should not fear migrants, of course. Our societies need migrants and the energy and ambition that they bring to our society. I would like to give you an update where we are today. Europe is facing complex, unexpected challenges. The starkest challenge right now is the state-sponsored migrant smuggling of human beings by Belarus. What Lukashenko is doing is new and unprecedented. State-sponsored migrant smuggling. We explicitly added this challenge to our new action plan against migrant So. I, uh, I presented at the end of September the new action plan against migrant smuggling, and it's aimed at dismantling organized criminal groups and adapting to new challenges like state-sponsored migrant smuggling. And this action plan goes hand in hand with the fight against illegal employment, which is one of the key drivers of irregular migration, which is why at the same time I presented a communication on the Employer Sanctions Directive to improve the fight against illegal employment. We estimate that around 17% of European labor market is for Ill illegal employment. And these people are very, very often uh, being uh, abused and used and are working under uh, extremely difficult and dangerous working conditions and are not being paid accordingly to uh, law or a collective agreement. 70% of the whole European labor market means a significant higher percentage in specific sectors, like construction sector, uh, hospitality, um, farming, agriculture, and also in more, more in some member states than in others. And this we really need to address. And member states need to do much more to get, go after the employers that use people in this way. And your role as social partners and civil society are critical here. You are best placed to help member states carry out existing EU rules effectively. My initiatives against smuggling and illegal employment are steps forward on the new pact. The events of, at our eastern border shows the urgency of progress. Progress on the new pact on migration and asylum I put forward last year. It's a strong and balanced set of proposals equal to the challenges of the future. We are making progress, but not enough progress. We have made progress because in May, 
uh, we made a political agreement on the European Blue Card, an important step forward on legal migration, introducing effective, uh, efficient rules to attract highly skilled workers to the EU. More flexible admission conditions, enhanced rights, and the possibility to move and work more easily between member states. The Commission has now prepared the legal groundwork, but we need you to make the European Blue Card a success. I ask you to support these new employees, these new colleagues, provide attractive working conditions, and give them all the help they need to prosper in Europe and help Europe prosper. Another step forward is the political agreement to transform our European Asylum Support Office, EASO, into a fully-fledged European Union Asylum Agency. This stronger mandate should enter into force by the end of this year. The reinforced agency will allow common operational standards, indicators, guidelines, and best practices to help implement EU asylum law. Constructive progress on the other legislative files under the new pact is now crucial. To protect EU borders, to further strengthen Europe's ability to manage migration, to welcome those who have a right to come and provide humane treatment and dignified returns for those who don't enjoy this right, in line with EU values and principles. And the better we manage irregular migration, the more opportunity there will be for legal pathways to Europe. Legal pathways to protection in the EU have been high on the agenda for many years and are again in focus because of the tragic and very dangerous situation um, for many Afghans. Together with the High Representative Vice President Josep Borrell, I co-chaired on the beginning of this month the high-level forum on providing protection to Afghans at risk. All member states were present on high level. I put forward a proposal to establish a multi-annual support scheme for Afghans at risk. To combine protection efforts in the short term, like evacuations and safe passage, already 18,000 Afghans have been given protection uh, in the European Union member states since August. And on the medium term, we need resettlement, humanitarian admission, family reunification, and other complementary pathways. Member states responded very positively to our uh, high-level uh, forum. Several member states are considering specific resettlement and humanitarian admission pledges devoted to Afghans. Others are working on complementary pathways for Afghans, like humanitarian corridors in Italy and extended family reunification in Ireland. The Afghan Forum on Protection uh, builds on the success of the high-level resettlement forum I organized in July to step up resettlement and humanitarian admission. Through joint leadership with like-minded countries, notably the US and Canada, only together we can make a real difference. All relevant stakeholders were there, international organizations, member states, NGOs, including the Commission's expert group on the view of migrants. And some of these experts are present here today. I want to thank uh, our expert group here today. I thank you for your valuable time and input you dedicate to our work. Resettlement is not only about safe journeys, but also about a welcome home. Communities should play a much stronger role in reception and integration of newcomers. We know that there is interest and willingness to do so. We have several EU-funded projects running to promote community sponsorship, and our asylum agency is working with the member states to help them put in place such schemes, and this work will continue. I started this speech by saying the best step to integration is work, but the first step to integration is very often education. I think about Armen, a Syrian refugee who had to flee because he's gay. He went to the Netherlands through resettlement and now speaks Dutch perfectly. After following his dream and completing studies in hotel management, I think about an Afghan refugee, a teenage girl, a football player, who couldn't go to school or play football after the Taliban came. She's now in Portugal 
wanting to go to school and have already started playing football again. Access to good education for migrant children is one of uh, my top priorities. Uh, one of the top priorities of my action plan on integration and inclusion. Migrant children often face specific challenges in addition to other obstacles they share with other children. Young migrants face higher risk of dropout, more than twice that of the local population. We need to support our teachers, our school community. We need to make our schools a hub for integration for children and for parents. We also need to support our schools with the digital challenges that migrant children face, also mentioned by, by Krista. The digital revolution accelerated during the pandemic. And this is, of course, a chance. But it's only a chance if we are well prepared and accompanied by support measures for all those that do not have the key, the means, or the equipment. If you're born outside the European Union, you're probably not to be able to afford a computer. Your probability not to be able to afford a computer is much higher than if you're born here. Let me give an example of a positive mix of integration and digital revolution. The RIDE project, or Reach Inclusion Through Digital Empowerment for Migrant Women, funded by our Migration Fund. Some of the organizers involved are actually present in the forum today. This ongoing project promotes inclusion of migrant and refugee women into the digital sector through reskilling and upskilling with speciali specially designed courses and possibilities to start working. So let me conclude again on the roles that you, members of the European Economic and Social Committee, NGOs, local and regional authorities can play to achieve better and more effective integration policies. Many of you are experienced actors in this field, and we need to continue to work together to make our societies more inclusive so that everyone can fully take his or her part. I would like to wish you very fruitful discussions for the rest of the forum today and also tomorrow. And thank you very much for this opportunity to address you, and thank you for your attention.